Welcome back to the shop guys. I hope you all had a great Christmas and an even better new year. Something a little bit different today. We are gonna start on my 1977 shovel head project. So later on in this episode guys, we're going to tip off from my mate Chris, there's nine classic vehicles for sale so we're going to head on up and check them out. Right so back to the bike build guys, this is what you all tuned in to see, this is my 1977 shovel head project. I picked this bike up off a mate of mine Al a couple of months ago, something I've always wanted to build. We are going to build this thing, we're going to cut it up and we're going to build this thing into a 1960s nostalgic chop. Cut half an inch off this side on the, on the right hand side here. Because as you can see, the standard locations here, it's splayed out at the bottom. Whereas that one, by the time we put a little half inch space in the top, it's going to sit dead square. Right, so first up guys, I wanted to set the ride height on this bike. I did want to have this thing as a soft tail, I didn't want a hard tail. I really like the look of having a set of shocks on the back. But we are going to make this thing as rigid as we can. So here we are cutting brackets off uh, for motor mounts and fuel tanks. And what we ended up doing was we cut the bracket off the rear of the frame where the original shock mounts were. And we pulled them forward about two inches. And we also moved the lower mounts in half an inch. They kind of stuck out too far. They didn't look cosmetically right, so we brought the shocks forward two inches and in half an inch. Right guys, up nice and early this morning. I've got an absolute cracker today. I couldn't even sleep last night. I had my mate Chris come around who we called Jerry. Um, one of his mates has sadly passed away and the kids are selling off all his cars. He's got nine cars for sale. Um, I think there's two 1930s Willy Coops, two Model A's. Um, there's a 1927 Lincoln Town Car that's a V8. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff. The kids just want them gone, which is, which is quite sad really, but I understand. So we're gonna head down south this morning, go check them all out. Um, I think this is gonna be an absolute corker. Right, so after checking out these cars, the owner has actually asked us to get them all running for him. So we're gonna chuck a couple of them on the truck and the trailer, get them back to the shop and see if we can fire them up. And then it's back onto the shovel head build. Right behind me here, we've just picked up this 1927 Rio Flying Cloud. Absolutely incredible old car, almost 100 years old. Um, it's a non-runner. We're gonna try our best today to try and get this thing running and driving out of the shop. I don't think it's gonna to be too much of an issue. Had a quick look at the points. We're gonna clean all the contacts up and I think we're gonna just pull the carb down to be sure, rebuild the carburetor. But apart from that, fingers crossed, I think this thing's gonna run and drive. This carb smells horrible, man, honestly. But by the looks of this, someone's been in here, I reckon. You can kind of see this thing's been cleaned up with a wire wheel at some point, which is not always good news. Were they chasing a problem? I expect they probably were. Most carbs are pretty, pretty self-explanatory, even if you haven't built one before. And it's usually just block jetting or something like that, just with, you know, old fuel <clears throat> sort of starting to solidify or starting to, you know, destroy seals and stuff. But I kind of figure if you just pull it all apart, make sure you know obviously where everything goes, clean everything, you know, with some brake cleaner or some sort of degreaser. The trick of the trade here is compressed air. Just clean every gallery out. Blow everything out with compressed air. You know, you'd be, you'd be amazed. You don't necessarily, I mean, where would you find a carb kit and gaskets and whatnot for this thing? If anything's damaged, we might have to make some gaskets, but I don't think by the look of it, we're gonna need much. I think it's just a good old fashioned clean and you know, reassemble, which will be nice. I mean, it's spotlessly clean. This guy's a cracking ass, look at this. Should theoretically fly. 
float. But I bet ya, this takes some water. That one needs to be fixed. Right, so my idea here, guys, I've got some metal lead and tin replacer here. This is a metal filler. Mix up a, mix up a small amount of thin, uh, filler, give it a nice white round the edge outside. <clears throat> this should be enough. I think that'll do the trick. Right, so let's put this carb to the side. We're gonna fit this later on in the episode and see if we can fire this old girl up. Now, let's jump back on the bike build. My mate Al sold me this project. Got some awesome bits and pieces. 1200 shovel heads, got some fishtail pipes. Soft tail rear end, which is what I wanted. Don't want to go hard tail. We're going to make this thing a soft tail, but very almost rigid in the same project. Sissy bar, king and queen seat. I want to build this thing into like a 60s chop, you know, tall bars, really narrow bars. It's got a three inch open primary belt drive on it, which is absolutely killer. Even came with a tank. Al had painted this tank, boxed in all the bottom so that we can sit the tank on top of the frame. So like I said, it's come with some nice bits and pieces. Picked up this rear fender the other night. We're just trying to get this thing to look nostalgic. I've got this idea in my mind of exactly how I want this thing to look and I ain't gonna sort of sec settle for second best. I want this thing to sort of represent you know, a really early old school chop. So uh, see if we can try and trial fit this rear fender that I've got. I've got two. Um, we are gonna make a sissy bar for it and a king and queen seat. So let's crack on with this rear fender. Um, see if we can make a mess of it. just mocked this rear fender and this rear tire up in place. Now I've got the length of the fender and I've got it to start and finish where I want it. I need to take two inches out the guts. So we're gonna cut this thing up and see if we can weld it all back together. Right, so here's one of my favourite tools, my little joggling tool. What this does is it puts a lip or a little step in the fender or the sheet metal that you're using so that you can lay one over the top and still have a flush finish. got the fender shortened as you can see it doesn't fit the radius of the tire right so I'm gonna throw this thing in the vise with a hammer and dolly see if I can beat this thing into the same rough shape as the tire right so after a little bit of persuasion with my hammer and dolly I'm really happy with the way this fits the tire I want this thing to hug the tire and sit as close as I can without rubbing um, we will do some body work. We will probably run this thing through an English wheel, but I'm pretty happy with the way this thing's turning out. Right, guys, so there is the roughed out rear fender. What we ended up doing was obviously we shortened a lot of it. Um, we shrunk it. I think I took about two inches out of the center of it. The radius was still too aggressive, so I've got a hammer and dolly on it and just beat it into submission. We will probably run that through an English wheel just to clean it up, you know, weld the seam up. It's kind of going to be where it wants to sit. Even though it's going to be a soft tail, I don't want that clearance between the tyre the and the rear fender. So 
we're going to set the ride height, which I think is probably going to be not far off that piece of 10 mil 3 8 hose. We're, even though it's going to be a soft tail, I'm going to machine some blocks up in here. So it, it's going to be a solid rear end, but it's going to look like it's a soft tail. Obviously running a king and queen seat on the back of this, the rear, you know, the pillion side of the seat mounts to the fender. So if we have any suspension travel, the seat's going to bend and bind. So that's kind of the look I'm going for. Real old school, real slick. We're going to run like a coca. It's almost like an all-terrain tire. I can't remember what they call it. But I'll put a I'll put a photo up and show you the rear tire. But I'm pretty happy with that. I'm definitely no panel beater by any means, but I'm quite happy with that. It's a good place to start. Right, so that's enough of the bike build for this episode. If you do want to see more on this build, don't forget to like and subscribe. Right now for the big moment, let's fit this carb up to this 1927 Rio and see if we can get this old girl running. Runs on vacuum. I've seen a lot of guys take these out and run just a 12 volt electric pump because they give you so much grease. They're, you know, for what they are, they're not simple, they're quite complicated. So I really want to try and get it running with this. I'd love to keep this in and I'm going to try my hardest. I'm sure we can get it to work, but for some reason it still ain't pulling fuel and I don't know why. So back to the drawing board. Let's try and get this thing nutted out. So this auto vac is basically, guys, the same principle as a float bowl and carb breader. This thing was bone dry when I pulled this out. So this here is whatever that consists of. So you can see it's just a big plunger and there's a switch up the top. <clears throat> so I've taken this off just for now. I've put some fuel in here and I'm gonna try and see if I can get this thing to run by itself. I kind of feel like that's high enough for the carb breader being down there. So I think that should gravity feed the carb. So let's see. Let's see what we can do. Stick this back in here. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Good. This should work. Man, you've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding. No way. Old. That idles like an absolute baby. Look at it. Man. Right, let's put this thing back together, throw the rocket cover back on it. Um, take her out for a spin.